we've talked to them afterwards, and now I'll uh, give a speech to Alice. All right. because I'm afraid to see how many ums and haws I have during this speech, but we'll do our best. So, uh, to get started, uh, I just wanted to see, raise of hands, I'd like to see the crowd, how many of them actually own small businesses right now, um, whether it's two to three years old or longer, um, how many are kind of just in the startup phase, they're getting on their first year and everything, perfect. And how many people are here because they have an idea and are just wondering how to get started or what they should do? Anybody? A couple people? Perfect. All right, so uh, what I'm going to be talking about today are strengths. And I'm, you might be looking at me saying, what is this small frame person going to be able to talk to me about strengths about? But it's more than just physical attributes. And what I want to really get into is what do you have to offer when you go into a startup and how can you make your strengths uh, really benefit your company, and then also what are your weaknesses, because it, you may be the best at something, but if you don't know what you're not good at, there's likelihood that you might actually be a detriment to your startup. So we'll go into our first slide here. Alright, so again, my name is Alex Sewell, I am the Vice President of Motor Mood. Uh, my contact information is up there, so if you guys have any questions along the way or want to reach out to me after this, uh, feel free. Um, you might want to know what some of my qualifications are. Uh, I come, I'm a Fullerton College student in their entrepreneurship program, but I've kind of grown up around entrepreneurship my whole life. Uh, it's kind of been in my family, so my grandfather owned a bakery for about 20 years. Um, also, my grandparents owned a company that worked in the backflow industry. Uh, that is going on 30 years now, and then my father opened up a pizza restaurant out in Austin uh, as soon as I graduated high school. So I went down there, uh, moved to Austin with them, stayed there for six months and helped them kind of get this uh, new business started. And when I came back, I knew it, as soon as I graduated high school, I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I'm, anyone who's an entrepreneur in here probably knows that there's just a craving, an urge, something inside you that says, you're not meant to go work for someone else. You need to be your own boss. You need to start something. You see a problem out there in the world and you need to fix it and you're the one to do it. If you don't have that feeling, that's okay. You can still make a difference in the world, but we're here for entrepreneurs, so I, I, I'd like to see everyone here have the same feeling. So, um, from there, uh, I, meet, I was working on a couple of my own ideas and they just weren't coming to fruition. I, there was something missing when I was trying to start my ideas. And I would come up with something, I'd spend a lot of time, money, and effort trying to get it started. And just right when it would feel like it was supposed to happen, it wouldn't. And so I really had to take a step back and see what I was missing. And I realized what I was missing was a team. I had strengths, I had things that I really liked to do, but there were also a ton of things that I didn't. There were things that I would think that, I, okay, I can put enough time and effort into it, but it would never be to the skill or to what I really wanted for the company. And so it would sacrifice. So I decided, where's the best place to look for a team? And I found Startup Weekend. So I actually participated in Startup Weekend Orange County back in 2013. Uh, I went with just a basic idea. I knew no one there. I went, I pitched my idea. I uh, got a team of eight people, and from there, uh, pitched at the final event of Startup Weekend and actually ended up winning the event. And it was a fantastic experience. I was able to meet with designers, to programmers, front-end and back-end, marketing people, everything that you realize that you, you truly need all these people when starting a company. So from there, after finishing the event, we kind of broke apart the team a little bit, everyone kind of went their separate ways, but there were two main people that I really felt a connection with, and it was someone, these two people I really wanted to stay a part of and really make a cohesive team. So that's what we did, and so today now we have Kina, who's a member of Motor Move and a member of the team, as well as Jesse, who's not here today, but he was the, actually the founder of the idea for Motor Move. So we'll go to the next slide, please. So, what I really want you guys to think right now is what do you guys like doing? Who, who are you? Are you someone who is a marketer? Are you someone who's an IT person? Do you like making connections or hard work? Are you the person who 
on the team really gets dirty and really focuses in and will spend three hours on an Excel spreadsheet with you want to know what's happening? Or are you the financial person? What do you truly like doing? What are the activities that make you happy? And the reason I want you to focus a little bit of time on this and really think personally, don't just listen to me saying these things. Really, what do you like? Because that's what you should focus on when you're starting your idea. Okay, next slide. So we all heard it, there's left brain people and right brain people, and unfortunately studies have shown that this is not technically true, but it's a very good way to look at it from a psychological aspect. Um, on the right brain, you have the creative people, the people who are maybe good at marketing, good at design, creating user experience, user interface, uh, possibly even some of your web developers if they're focusing on the front end. Um, and then, of course, on the left-hand side, you have those who focus on it more analytical. They might be the people who are good at finance, people that are great with numbers, that are maybe able to look at your large picture and figure out how to break it into an exact timeline so that you guys can meet your goals. And although, we, if you're right-brained, you say, yeah, I, I can probably create a spreadsheet. It's not that hard. I've seen other people make it before. I think I made one back in college when I was a freshman. I, I can do that. Or if you're a left brain person, you say, I see plug and play website builders, it's not too complicated, I can grab some pictures and put it up and everything will be good. And you know what, sometimes it can work, sometimes it's useful, but if you're not specializing on the aspect of your business that you enjoy, it's going to sacrifice a little bit. And so we'll go to the next slide. So. This, well, the reason I created this slide was I just wanted to kind of highlight all the things that go into starting a business. You have everything from team management, making sure that you're sending out your emails and recapping the team and uh, setting up an exact timeline. You're the big picture type of person. All the way from social media to marketing to building the connections, uh, going out to these events, making sure that you don't leave until you talk to every single person in this room. I enjoy public speaking and I like talking to people but it would be very difficult for me to want to do this every single day. And I, that's just something i got to be honest with myself. That's why Kina on our team is so amazing, because if you haven't met her yet, I don't know how that's possible. <laughs> and she'll hound you in a good way. And that's why it's important. And then there's people who do the financial aspects. Maybe you don't know how to get a return on investment or where to break even is or how to do your one, three, five year projections. And those are things that are going to be very important when you start looking for investments or even how to really go about your business and how to grow. And then you have, obviously, everyone's favorite one are the engineers. How many of you know how to solder? Anyone in this room know how to? Wow, that's impressive. Good job. <laughs> All right. But then you have the mechanical engineering, the electrical engineering, the programming. It's amazing when there's a lot of software out there, and I love software, and I think it's great. What we focus on in our team is a hardware product and every engineering aspect goes into it. You have mechanical, you have electrical, you have programming. You need someone on there who can do this quickly and knows the ins and outs of it instead of me going to Bar or not Barnes & Noble, sorry. Board, or, no, Barnes & Noble, right? Borders is the one that's closed now. So going to Barnes & Noble and getting a book on Engineering 101 and trying to figure out how I'm going to this list, figure out which ones you enjoy doing and figure out which ones you just don't and make sure that you Keep that in mind because you're, you're going to need to find someone uh, to help you out. So next slide. So I consider this the lone slide. It's, it's like after you finally looked at that list and realized how many things you like and realized it's maybe only two or three things on that list, how the heck am I going to get my startup off the ground? You start to feel a little bit alone, but uh, and that the world or even your idea is much bigger and much more daunting than you first realized. So I think it's very important that to, to know that that's not a bad thing. That's, that's how it should be. You should be able to surround yourself with people that are going to look at your idea, that are going to agree with everything that you're doing, and make sure that they're going to put everything that they love and everything that they want to do into it, so that way you can take the goals that you have and be able to put that amount of effort and time and energy into it as well. So next slide. So this is a fun one. This is kind of what we always hear. On, on a startup team, you should have the hipsters, the hackers, and the hustlers. You should have someone that's going to focus completely on design, your user experience, 
making sure that when someone looks at your product, they absolutely fall in love with it. You have the hackers, which are the engineers, and you have the hustlers, which are your marketers, i.e. Kina. So you, you need someone in each one of these categories if you're going to be successful. You might be able to fill in two-thirds of these, or maybe you think I can do all three of them. That's great, and I hope that you go out and try it, but I, I personally believe that you're really going to need more people. So next slide. And it's exactly what I needed. I, I tried multiple ideas, and I failed. And sometimes people look at failure as a bad thing, but if, if you truly believe in a business, failure just means that you learn something that you're able to take your experience and figure out what went wrong and how to improve on that. And so I found that I needed a team to surround me with whatever we were working on and make sure that we could do it the best we could. So we have Armin Bassani on, on the right hand side as our lead or on your left hand side as our lead engineer. We have Jesse Kramer who is the president and founder of MotorMood, uh, myself which is the vice president and Kina DeSantis as our head of marketing. Next slide. And just to kind of get an understanding of where we've come from. So what Motor Mood is, it's a product that allows drivers to say thank you to other drivers on the road using a remote control light up smiley face. It, in essence, it seems like a very simple and fun idea, but it, it takes a lot of work, whatever you are doing, even if you think you're creating a very simple app, it's amazing how much time and effort goes into actually creating it. All the setbacks that might happen and how you're going to get around them and keep improving and create the idea that you originally had to the public and make sure that it's going to be a success. So I know that personally if I was to do this alone, Motor Mood would probably still come out to market but it wouldn't be nowhere near as amazing as it is if I didn't have my team uh, along the way. So if you guys have any questions on maybe how do you find your team, Coming to events like this is a great way to start, finding like-minded people. Uh, I know that there's a couple meetup groups that are specifically to find your co-founders, which can be great. Or you can go to places like Startup Weekend and um, just start something new and find your team in three days and it's like a crash course. But remember, when you're starting a company, it's like a relationship. It, you're going to talk to each other every single day. When there's something wrong, you're going to run to those people. We always like to joke on our team, we're in a polygamous relationship. With, I have two males and one female, and although it's not sexual in any way, it's something that you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis. And you really need to kind of love the people that you're going to be around, otherwise it's going to be a very long and hard journey. So uh, I hope to hear from all of you uh, at the end of this. If you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, and good luck on anything that you guys are doing. So thank you.